Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Aaron Dykes. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, reporter Patrick Henningsen unleashes bombshell quote from SPLC head Mark Potok, where he claims there is no hate speech. This from an organization that claims that those who don't bow down to the government are inciting hate. Plus, Mike Adams joins us in studio to talk about the gross injustice of Agenda 21 and its emerging effects on small-town America. Then, TSA whistleblower claims that agents fear radiation from naked body scanners. We'll also cover today's top headlines and more tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. At the top of our news stack tonight, our reporter Patrick Henningsen has developed sources inside the Sanford Police Department, uh, as well as other sources he, co he has compiled to show Zimmerman will most likely not be arrested for first degree murder. They are not planning to get together a grand jury. And he's also uncovered disinformation about supposed neo Nazi groups patrolling around the Orlando, Sanford, Florida area, proving that that has all been a hoax, and yet the media ran with it. But breaking news he's brought to us earlier today on the show, he's going to elaborate on, is the conversation he had with Mark Potok of the SPLC saying there is no hate speech, at least not when it comes to the new Black Panther group. Patrick, thank Thanks for joining us. Hi, good to be with you, Aaron. And of course, we see this Trayvon Martin case continuing to spiral into a national debate. Uh, some have pointed out that they're trying to stir up a race war. At the very least, they're trying to punch our buttons and distract us in time for the elections, keep our mind off of the larger looting going on throughout this ongoing economic crisis. Absolutely. That's exactly what's going on. But worse than that, Aaron, they're going to take us into a whirlpool of social division and apply something that appeals to the lowest common denominators on both the far right wing and also on the far left wing and so it's it's bad it's bad enough that they're uh, just this is providing a distraction that's run for over a month it's dominating every major media outlet i'm talking about newspapers television national news cable news uh, the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman media circus has just taken over. And now they're using it, the opportunists on the left-leaning side, uh, in terms of Al Sharpton and uh, the Jeremiah Wrights and the Barack Obamas and the R Rachel Maddows of the world, will take this and use it to further make a divide. It's an election year, Aaron. It's 2012. So uh, cheap political points are looking to be scored. And then on the far right, you have the uh, bankrupt... Uh, totally irrelevant neo-Nazi group. And also, I, I'll, I will put the new Black Panther Party on the far right, actually. Um, they're totally irrelevant. Both of those groups probably have uh, federal, either CIA or FBI informants uh, embedded at the highest level of the organization in order to steer their radical agendas. Yeah, I want to make that clear out of the gates because history shows, particularly these neo-Nazi groups, always are steered by these FBI informants, these provocateurs, get a couple of, of, of yokels in the group to make it look like something's happening. In fact, in the Orlando area back in 2006, there was a big splash over a neo-Nazi rally where they deliberately marched through the black community to try to stir up sentiments. And it turned out the leader of the group was this guy, David Gleddy, an FBI agent agent, an informant, a provocateur, and yet many of these neo-Nazis continued to support him even when he was exposed. And I saw a similar thing, actually, at a rally in Austin. I saw footage of it from a few years ago where you had a handful of these neo-Nazis and thousands of people in the crowd shouting them down, really buying into the very division they're trying to sell us. Sure. You have the same thing with the anarchist groups that they uh, bus out to the G20 or to the G8 protests, and these are people who were phallic lavas over their face, and also some of them uh, are police officers. You can see the uh, police issue boots and, and also military issue boots and so forth. That's, that's no surprise to anybody. But look, um, our good friend Bill Ayers, who uh, is linked with uh, organizations like the Ford Foundation, you know, the Ford Foundation was created to subvert labor unions, for one, uh, all over the world. And also, they're, they're very tight links with the CIA. So our good friend Bill Ayers, who has built up this beautiful reputation as a radical leftist, the people like Sean Hannity, who have no brain activity at all, 
or buying into the Bill Ayers radical left myth, when in fact Bill Ayers, most likely, I will bet, I'll bet the car and the house, the Bill Ayers is a informant. He's an embedded individual, because if he wasn't, for the bombings and the horrible crimes that he's taken part in conspiring, he'd be doing back-to-back -back life sentences in a place like Terre Haute, Indiana Federal Penitentiary. And of course, there's documentaries on the Weather Underground showing that numerous, numerous people inside that group were informants, others, I guess, useful idiots. But yeah, as you say, it's not that he's truly radical left or pushing the kind of class war or racial division that the Weather Underground pushed in those days. They're actually basically elitist. They're connected with Wall Street bankers and, yeah, part of this Ford Foundation system that Obama eventually grew out of. And you've got skull and bones people like McGeorge Bundy running the Ford Foundation programs where they deliberately chose to fund radical black groups and other minority groups instead of uh, much more tame groups who may have actually been able to accomplish some good things. Yeah, they're obsessed with controlling both sides of the conversation. They're obsessed with controlling both sides of the paradigm. It's it's a lot like, you know, when you when you go into a casino and you go to play at the blackjack table or whatever. Uh, every, that's us. We're we're the guys on the on the making the bets. They 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 run both sides of the game. The casino in the house is the only person who ever makes a profit in that equation. And that's exactly what we have with what unfortunately we have in America is a uh, total society that's run and directed by uh, dozens, in fact, hundreds of foundations and NGOs. And this is now spread all over the world. Uh, and you'll see it in almost every country on the planet. Uh, it's being done a clandestine agenda of social engineering, which is being achieved uh, quite quite efficiently, I might add, through the various foundations, through the Open Society Institute, through the Tides, through the Rockefeller Foundation, the Ford Foundation here in America. And we know how this mechanism works because we've studied history, but back to the Trayvon shooting case, why did this become such a media outburst? I mean, you had the Oscar Grant uh, killing uh, on the train system over there. There was outrage over that, but not anywhere near the same level. And we saw that cop serve, I think, one year at the most, maybe two years, and go off scot-free. The, the black community and the community at large forgot all about him, but they're up in arms over this Trayvon thing. We know it's been socially engineered, but let's get back into specifically why. What have you found, and what happened when you talked to Mark Potok? <laughs> well, uh, you know, the reason I got into this story at the beginning, Aaron, is because uh, I, I, I'm on the mailing list. Uh, I get news alerts from from the, the right wing uh, political side of the spectrum and also from the left wing. And I, I sign up to everybody's alerts because I want to see what's going on at all times. And uh, I got this one news alert from a incredibly Democrat Party oriented uh supposedly news website uh, out of Los Angeles called LA Progressive. Okay, they're very nice people who run this site. They're very well intentioned, very well meaning. Anyway, Julie Driscoll, who is this fire breathing uh, liberal blogger um, and a gatekeeper of sorts, and I chronicled this in my article on Infowars.com today. She ran with the neo-Nazi, the armed neo-Nazis patrolling the streets of Sanford. And I had a bit of an argument with the editor I said, I said, you know, you guys should be ashamed of yourself. You're helping to promote a race war. And this is one journalist talking to another, okay? We had this private conversation um, over the weekend. And uh, he said, well, it's, it's because of racial profiling. This is an opportunity to bring the, the, the issue of racial profiling to the fore. And I'm saying to myself, what racial profiling? You know, the, uh, how can the media or the mob the populist mob decide what the elements are of any criminal case. This should be uh, something for the police and for the courts. And then the liberal will come back to you and say, well, the police didn't do anything, the courts didn't do anything. It was only because of public outrage. Well, Aaron, what this is quite simply is was an easy target because there was a young uh, teenage boy and they've got all his, his child pictures. They don't have any pictures of how old he was when he actually was shot. And, that's another thing on its own, is the media presentation of this case. But it's an easy opportunity for uh, the, the, the real detritus of the political world. I'm talking about people like Al Sharpton or some of these other liberal pundits or the Chris Matthews of the world uh, in, in election year in order to score cheap points. And look what they've done. They're pushing America towards 
uh, in the direction of a race war. And I think shame on anybody in the media uh, who's, who's contributing to that. There's old ladies getting tasered. Infowars.com has hundreds of examples over the last year of old ladies getting tasered, people getting beaten, pulled out of wheelchairs, abused by police. This is happening to all of us, Aaron, in America. It's not just black people. It's not just Hispanics. It's whites. It's everybody. This is, this is our new police state. It's true, it's coming home to roost, but specifically, they were caught pushing this fake neo-Nazi story and the media ran with it. They not only played the race card, they stuffed the deck with so many race cards you can't look any other direction. Sure, I, I, and actually, I, I, I phoned the Southern Poverty Law Center uh, and I spoke to Mark Potak, who's uh, in charge there, and he is the Grand Master of the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center. And I said to him, what's going on down there in Sanford? Are there neo-Nazis or not? I wanted to get confirmation from Mark because I had seen this on the Southern Poverty Law Center's website. And he told me, he, and quite rightly, I have to give him credit, he said, no, there's no reports of that. Uh, he was kind of muffled about that rebuttal there. Um, that, that original story has since been retracted by the Miami New Times, by the way. Um, and anybody can just call the police department in Sanford, Florida, and they'll tell you if there's been any reports, and uh, there haven't. So, and I said to, uh, I said to Mr. Botok, I said, hey, um, had a good conversation about legal uh, aspects of what's going on and also about the history of neo-Nazis. And he filled me in on quite a few interesting uh, characters and so forth that they keep track of. And I said, well, what about the new Black Panther movement? I said, they've gone on Miami radio. They're calling for blood in the streets. We're going to get sued and we're going to get booted and we're going to see blood on the streets. They are calling for a race war, literally, and also have put a bounty on George Zimmerman's head. Okay. So I said, is this hate speech? Could we could can we arrest these people? This is a bit dangerous. And Mark Potok's uh, exact words to me were, "There's no such thing as hate speech," and that was a quote that just blew me away, Aaron. I don't know what to say. Um, he said that it would have to be an immediate threat. In other words, hate hate speech in their eyes, as he referred to my question, only applies to when you're standing across the road at a like if I was a a Black Panther across the road, and there were Ku Klux Klan across the road, and someone yelled uh, in some remark that incited violence. And of course, you're discussing hate speech to point out the hypocrisy, because it's this issue they're trying to brew up to pass ridiculous laws to restrict the First Amendment. There's already laws on the books about making threats against someone's life, threatening violence, trying to carry it out. Uh, here's one of the posters they brought up for the murder of Trayvon Martin, $10,000 reward. Dead or alive, isn't that what they said? Yep, that's what they said. You know, I think it's pretty good indication, Aaron, here. Uh, let's use our powers of deductive reasoning. If the Black Panther leader, uh, Mr. Malik, um, whatever his last name is, um, if he's calling for this on, the, on, on radio, and this is on record, um, and he's not being arrested, I think that's a pretty, pretty uh, certain indication that he is uh, a federal uh, informant or a plant or a tool of some sort. Because if it was somebody who wasn't part, wasn't registered with the federal government, if they went and said that, that sh the station would be shut down, they would be arrested, and they would be put in jail, and there would be protests on the streets like you've never seen. Okay. And not but to I mention everyone else speaking out against this should say, hey, don't go there. You're going to discredit the critique we're trying to make. It just shows how much of it is disingenuous from the start. Uh, now, I just want to shift gears, though, because if Zimmerman did something wrong, he should have justice. But they pretty much decided not to go with the grand jury. At the same time, you found from your sources inside the police department in Sanford, they really want to go after the Stand Your Ground uh, Second Amendment defense clause in Florida. Uh, can you flesh that out for us? Yeah, it's not exactly my uh, sources in the police department. It's a, that is from a judge in the Central Florida court who's very close to the prosecutor's office. Sure. I won't mention their name because I'd like to keep their identity anonymous for obvious reasons, but they indicated to me that uh, the Zimmerman trial in a grand jury, uh, according to the inside sources, is too tough a sell. In other words, it, it's almost impossible. Not only that, 
uh, Florida law stipulates that only a first degree murder uh, charge can warrant a grand jury investigation. So it doesn't look like it's going to happen. You know, within the pros within the uh, parameters of the law, uh, George Zimmerman is not getting off scot free. It's it is what it is, and it would have been the same with any other incident. The public fervor behind and around all of this incident makes it something else. So there will be political pressure put to bear on that uh, special prosecutor there and also on the Florida legal system. That political pressure will most likely result, according to my uh, source who's a judge in this court system, is that they will revisit the stand your ground law. In other words, they're going to probably have to rewrite this law because of public pressure, which is a kind of a sad thing in itself that has come to that, but it'll be retreat first, retreat first and then stand your ground. So it's a new way to define self-defense. That's where the conversation is going. The, the higher ups, the engineers, that's where they're taking it. We're giving you a little insight into that now. So just wait in the weeks and months to come and you'll see these exact talking points coming out. So we've done that here at InfoWars. And we already have, but Obama has promised to sneak attack the Second Amendment. Uh, he was quoted telling the Brady Center, something very close to that effect. We've seen the Fast and Furious stuff unfold, but if they do pursue stand your ground, especially leading up to an election, it's just A plus B is C for Obama to to, in, to cite Trayvon, who has already said would have been his son if he had a son, uh, to cite the stand your ground, how wrong he thinks it is, and to push for some form of gun control, whatever it is they think they can get their hands around, around that issue. What do you think? You know, you're absolutely correct in that analysis. And what this will be is if there will be enough pressure to kind of redefine self-defense laws in America, that is a nice entree into restricting uh, the use of firearms. And of course, that is even knocking on the door of the Second Amendment right there. And that is something that Obama can only really go for in his second term uh, when he is reelected. And by the looks of the uh, GOP circus at the moment, it's almost a certainty Obama- Almost will, a certainty. It will get almost a certainty he will get his second term. So uh, this Trayvon Martin thing has really softened the ground around the Second Amendment uh, in order to make that possible and for the, the federal uh, executive order signing state machine to be sprung into action uh, and to sort of go around the Supreme Court, go under it. As Nancy Pelosi said, we're going to pole vault over it, we're going to dig under it, or we're going to knock the fence down, but we're going to get in. And uh, that's basically what you're going to see more of uh, after uh, next January. It's sick, Patrick. They always go after the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. They've done so much to the Fourth, Fifth, on and on. What's next? A return to quartering of troops, the Third Amendment? Uh, I mean, it's just sick how much they attack our basic principles under the Bill of Rights. Uh, your words in closing here. Well, my words in closing was one of the most... Uh, but worrying things I've seen was when I was watching PBS, the public broadcasting system, and there was a special program on called Finding Your Roots. And this was in a, I believe it was a New England uh, high school classroom. And we had uh, white children and black children together in class and a black professor who was focusing on this uh, history of, of the founding fathers and, and really highlighting George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, and these were all slave owners. And uh, he was giving this information to the children. And, he's, and they said, what do you think about your founding fathers now? And the kids were like, well, that's, they're not very good. They're part of the problem. Quote, they're part of the problem. Anybody can watch this kind of disturbing uh, PBS program that's made dressed up to be a nice kind of um, happy, liberal, progressive, Coney 2012 kind of we all get together mm -hmm. program. But it's quite it's quite damaging. So in in in, re, in really there you can throw out the Constitution along this line of thinking because the founding fathers were slave owners, and so anything that America did in its history is wrong and bad, and you know in de, using white and black again uh, is is divisive uh, tool to divide people into their respective social quarters. It's it's disgusting. This country has come a long way in 250 years, and there are a few people who are determined, who I think they hate America or something, 
because they want to bring us right back. And definitely a lot of wrong stuff happened to the black community in particular and lots of people, but the first laws to restrict the Second Amendment were to keep black free people from owning guns, uh, to keep them disarmed as they got out of slavery and moved through that terrible Jim Crow period and the rest of it. Anyway, a big topic. We won't get it all into it here. Keep your eye on this issue, Patrick, because we can see the ways they're trying to develop it, and we'll speak to you in the near future. Thanks for joining us tonight Thank on the InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be back Back after this with the rest of the news and we'll throw it a break here. Uh, we, we're going to show you some of the police state four footage during these breaks. We're going to show you contest entries later as well as our regular stuff. So watch the breaks too. Thanks for tuning in. The InfoWars Nightly News. We need your support to stop everything they're trying to do to destroy our way of life.